back to the Sunday news. Got a number of things to get through today, particularly since I missed last Sunday, but please stay tuned to the end. There's something you might want to see. First article, Ecuador backs down on import tax. There was a 10% new tax put on. This is on top of the up to 140% taxes already on items imported. And I can tell you this personally affected me. I recently had something come through on FedEx that fell into that little window. It's been now repealed, but for a short time, that 10% was on there. So something came in for me on FedEx. It was not purchased. It was not new. So the other taxes didn't apply, but the new 10% tax did apply. And so I had to pay $50 for something that today, a few days later, I wouldn't have to pay anything for. The last thing they needed was more taxes. And apparently a lot of trading partners were pretty upset and so they backed off, they repealed it. Wonderful move. Next item up, Moreno proposes a popular referendum vote in Venezuela to decide a re-vote. The recent election, re-election of Maduro, the tyrant, the dictator, ruling Venezuela with a steel fist, of course he won the vote. His opposition is sitting in prison. And most of the countries in Latin America condemn the vote. Conspicuously, Ecuador did not, along with Bolivia, Cuba. So this represents a change in course, and it's good news. The people of Venezuela need all the support they can get. And I believe it stems from the recent talks that Ecuador is having with the United States to better relations. The relationship has gotten quite bad and Moreno is trying to do what he can to better those relations. They're being killed in trade because with all the barriers they put up and the taxes, a lot of that trade went off to other countries and it's hurt the people of Ecuador. And there's a number of things that they really need to cooperate on, particularly with these drug cartels blossoming on the border and into Ecuador and inside Ecuador. There's a lot of uh, judicial corruption, a lot of corruption within the politics of Ecuador as a result of that. So getting a little outside help certainly won't hurt. Ecuador's foreign minister was just elected president of the United Nations General Council. The result of the vote is as follows. Numbers of votes obtained. Her Excellency Maria Fernanda Espinosa Garces of Ecuador, 128. Her Excellency Mary Elizabeth Flores Flake of Honduras, 62. Having obtained the required majority, Her Excellency Maria Fernanda Espinosa Garces of Ecuador has been elected president of the 73rd session of the General Assembly. Congratulations to her. I will point out that she was chosen on actually part of a rotation system that goes around the world, but there were a couple other candidates and it was a negotiated kind of thing from what I understand, but she's well qualified, well deserved, good for Ecuador, good for her. Bit of local news for all you Cuencanos and Cuencanas out there. The Wind Horse Cafe closes after six years. Now, I was always curious about the place. I never went. And I don't know. I know that they only serve breakfast and, and uh, early lunches. It didn't seem to matter. Whenever I would go there, they were always closed. So I never had a chance to get in there and check out why everybody thought it was good. And I've never heard anything negative. So um, I guess it's sad for people that enjoyed going there. For me, it's just, I can't miss what I never had. Corpus Christi ended this week. Corpus Christi is that holiday. I mentioned it in another video. I showed the, the stacks of candy. Um, do we have those clips? Could you check? Yeah, run those clips. And I also mentioned that there's fireworks involved. So here you go.
National Assembly begins revision of the communications law. This is tremendous news. It's huge news. This is gigantic news. This is more news of a positive reform. Now, I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but in Ecuador, there has been really no free speech and there's been no free press. I'll just give you two examples. There are many, but there's two examples. When Correa was president, you could not criticize him publicly. The Loja newspaper, the city of Loja, they have a newspaper that's a national newspaper, and they ran an article that was critical of some of the policies that, that Correa was doing. And it wasn't horrible, slanderous, it was just factual. They got shut down. They were shut down for a month. That really throws a bucket of water on the news. And it wasn't even a fake news issue. The second example I'll give you is the mayor of Quito was giving a speech and he was critical of many of the things that Correa was doing at the time. They were all truthful. They were all factual. He got put in prison for 30 days. Talk about your big brother. Third thing I will mention is actually unfair to criticize businesses. Not only unfair, but you can be put in jail, you can be fined thousands of dollars. So you really can't criticize businesses. Now, as a side note, I want to, I want to mention something here. I think it's important for people that are not here, that are planning to come here, or people that haven't been here very long, or anyone who doesn't realize this. There are some gringo services that promote themselves on Gringo Post and Cuenca High Life, and you see them on Facebook, and they, if somebody asks a question, they jump in, they're the resident expert, and you have a number of people, uh, one or two handfuls of people, that will praise them and support them. And so somebody new thinks, ah, oh, they must be good. Everybody, all I ever see is something positive. What you don't see, and I get this because I've gotten so many emails with horror stories. But I'm not stupid either. I don't want to go to jail and I don't want to get fined. So I haven't presented those horror stories. I allude to certain things. And I'm doing that here by not using any particular name. But those gringo services will go after anybody that posts up their own personal horror story, their horrible experience that they had. So all you will ever see is the positive. And they can do that because the law is behind them. You can't criticize them. You can't tell your horrible story, even if it's true. Like in the case of the Loja newspaper, in the case of the mayor of Quito, there was nothing they said that wasn't factual. So those laws are being reviewed and revised, and thank goodness, already they've taken the muzzle off the press. They, they are much closer to a free press again. And we've got here, in Quito, a volcano that's awakened again, and it's pretty spectacular lava flows. There's ash being thrown around Quito. On the other hand, this goes off pretty often. I mean, well, it's almost an annual event, or sometimes biannual to some extent. Now, the last time there was a pretty good explosion of that volcano was about nine, ten years ago, and uh, it looked like it was snowing in Quito. There was ash that deep from the volcano. Now, on a sad note, and I hate to end on a sad note, but we need to end on a sad note. I need to mention the passing of Anthony Bourdain. It's had a personal effect on me. It probably has on some other people. His life and his life story were so relatable. I completely got when he talked about his life story. And so his passing feels personal. Never knew the guy. Yeah, we're both from New York, but I don't know him. He doesn't know me. But his story touched me and many other people. And we could relate to it. And so seeing him pass becomes a personal thing. I found a clip from his last interview, so take a look at this. A lot of other addicts 
looked in the mirror every day and did not see somebody worth saving. Even at my worst, there was a level of vanity, I guess. I looked in the mirror and saw somebody who, somebody deep in there, regardless of how low I was, my circumstances, I had a high enough opinion of myself that I thought um, it's worth going forward. I think a lot of people in a similar situation, for whatever reason, look in the mirror and see somebody bad, unworthy of good things. They say that he committed suicide. There's already some conspiracy theories out there. I don't know. Based on his past, it's very possible maybe he committed suicide. But let me say this to the expats here in Ecuador, in Colombia. It's very easy to be sad and isolated. To live in a place like Ecuador and Colombia, where it's foreign, with a different language, if you come here and you're not already the kind of person that can survive or even thrive in a certain amount of isolation, you need, you need to rethink about coming here. This is a breeding ground for sadness and isolation. It doesn't have to be. But it is because you have barriers, you have obstacles, and you have to overcome those to find your own personal happiness. There are a lot of people that I run into here, that I see comments on social media. They're putting up a pretense about how wonderful everything is for them. And you know who you are, and it's many of you. Everything is perfect, everything is wonderful. Most of that you can read between the lines and it's obvious they're not. Some people try too hard to put up this front that they're oh so happy. Nobody's happy that often. We all have our moods, particularly during the rainy season, and get pretty depressing. Don't hide it. I mean, you don't want to sweep everybody up in your drama because frankly people don't care about other people's drama to any great extent. On the other hand, when you're feeling sad and you're feeling isolated, it's important to find somebody to talk to. It's important to break out of whatever rut you feel that you're in and reach out to other people. Talk to someone. That's it for this week's news. See you later.